Welcome to 5.1 Geometric Constraints. We're going to learn about how to use geometric constraints in the sketching environment. So you're going to go into your IED folder, the one that you share with the class, and you're going to open up geometric constraints. Once you have it open, the first step is you do not want to work on this one because this is the shared one with everybody in the class. You're going to go File, Save As, and then you are going to choose where to save it and where you should be saving it is in your um, IED folder under Advanced CAD, and you should also add your last name to it. So there we go. I'll make, I'm making a copy because I've already done this. Now that we have it saved, we're going to close this one, and we are going to go into um, that folder where we just saved it. and we are going to open that one up. We are now going to go down here because we're going to actually edit this sketch. We are going to right click edit sketch. There it now we can edit this. Understand the point of this activity is to learn uh, all of these constraints. You can dimension things two way, one way with a dimension, the other way with a constraint. So step one. Um, we're going to work right here. It says make these two perpendicular. So we click the perpendicular icon here and we just simply click on the two lines and it will make that perpendicular. This could have been achieved by dimensioning these two at an angle of 90, but this is far easier. Make all three lines parallel. So parallel constraint is right here and we just simply click on the lines and they will turn parallel. And if you hit escape and then grab a corner, you can see that no matter where I move it, they are going to remain parallel. Okay, on this one it says uh, dimension circle three to two inches and fix it. So D for dimension, two inches. And now fixing it, that is this lock. If you click on the lock and click on the center, it will now fix this so I cannot move it. Dimension it also limits its size. And now it says we want to make 1 and 2 tangent to 3. Here's our tangent icon. And we will just click on these two. And it will make us... Oops, I lost the tangent icon. There we go. So it looks like Mickey Mouse. This one says make tangent uh, to both lines. Simply click on each line. Okay. Okay and they will go tangent to each other. This one's a little more complicated. This has to, or not a little more complicated. Uh, this one has to do with uh, coincident. This is the coincident command. This is a very useful command in that sometimes you draw something and the two endpoints don't actually line up. This helps you correct that. So it says make uh, point C fixed. Once again, this is fixed. And then make a and B coincident to point C. So I simply click on it, point B and point C, and it's going to move there. Click on point A and click on point C, and it's going to move there. And you'll notice, I'm hitting escape, that those points are fixed. I can move this around so I can make it look like Pac-Man, but um, those points will stay the same. Cocentric essentially means all the circles or all the arcs have the same center point. So we simply hit on cocentric, select this line and this line, or that circle and that circle, that circle and that circle, and they will all come together. Now, this one is the one that I use perhaps the most, well, second most behind the next one. Collinear. This is hugely helpful if you want two lines to stay on the same plane always. So here is collinear. You click on this line and this line, and then they'll go together. And I'll show you why these have a useful. If I drag this down and drag this up, you can see now that if I grab this point and move it, those will always stay on the same plane. This becomes very useful when you're dimensioning stuff and like a left and right object have to be the same. Okay, this one's very useful, the most useful in my opinion. A lot of times you'll draw a line, you want this line to be horizontal or vertical and you don't quite get it where you want it to be. You simply click on the horizontal vertical constraint, click on the line, 
it'll make them horizontal. Here, I'll make them vertical. The rule here is the line has to be close to the angle you want. So it's basically figuring out, okay, you're closer to vertical, I'll go vertical. If you wanted this to go to horizontal, escape. If I bring this down like that and then click on this line, you'll notice that it goes horizontal. Uh, equilateral, another wildly useful uh, trick, use the equal command. I want to make this equal to that, that equal to that. And then you'll notice that if I change the sizes, they change together. Um, and then make the circles the same size. We're going to use the equal command again. And then lastly, uh, line up the centers of the circles on the same horizontal plane. So we can use, how would we line these up so all centers are on the same horizontal plane? We use the horizontal vertical command and we just select the center points. Now, if I want all these circles to be the same size, I can just use the equals. And then if I wanted them to be the, all the same distance apart, I could go line construction and draw a line between there and then use the equal command to make those lines equal. And then I could get this fully dimensioned by fixing one of the circles and then dimensioning this line, let's say to 1.5, and this circle to say one. And notice I fully dimensioned those uh, three circles and I only had to input two dimensions. Hopefully that's useful. You wanna to try to utilize these new found features on your upcoming models.